Hello, hola, bienvenidos, and welcome to Oye Dímelo Cinema Club. Today we're going to be reviewing the movie Rififi from 1955. It's a French film. It's uh, directed by Jules Dastin. Sorry if I butcher French, not my first language. And it has Jean Servais and Carl Moner and Roberto Manuel. I was the one that picked the film, and but I didn't watch it alone. And so we'll be talking about it with my friends, my pal. Here we got Marina and Jason Eccles. Hola. Um, so uh, just real quick, I picked this movie at the end of the last review. I talked about how I kind of got last minute thrown, like, you got to pick a movie for next week. And I just, throughout the time we've been doing Oye Dimelo, I have like a catalog of the, I'll just like screenshot movies. If someone in an interview, another actor, director, whatever, talk about a film or something like that, or I'll write it down. And this is one of those films. Or when they're doing the Criterion Collection the picks and stuff like that on YouTube. And so I do not recall where, but I saved Rififi because mm -hmm. someone had mentioned it. And it was like noir and black and white and French. And so that's why I picked it. So without further ado, let's get into uh, first impressions, uh, initial thoughts. Hey, Marina, how about you go first? Awesome. I feel like I'm a little delayed. Hopefully not. Um, yeah, you know, older movie, foreign. Yeah, my fave. <laughs> Just love it. Just no. Um, I obviously had to connect to it. It was a little tough at first. Just my thing with older movies is just a little bit slow start sometime. Um, also with the way my attention is the you know language barrier and being having to look at the subtitles like you can't check an email you might miss a whole heist scheme if you look down for a second um but overall i'm glad that there was like a um an extreme plot like it kind of was like made me wonder if oceans 11 had like taken a couple of things from it like just like the whole heist aspect um it it, yeah, like I said, foreign films are tough for me. You guys know this. Anybody watches our videos knows it's tough for me. Mm -hmm. But overall, um, having like a, a like a solid heist plan helped me really get into it a little bit more. Rather than just being like silly, goofy love story, like it was just a it was a it was a nice group. I, I understood. I was able to be like, okay, this is what's going on. A lot of times, I'm like, what's happening? It's pretty and the clothes look great, but I just don't get what's happening and it's all in French. But no, it was very, <laughs> very apparent that what was happening and I was actually able to enjoy those elements of it. All right, cool. All right, Mr. Echoes, how about we just jump into your initial thoughts? Thanks, Dino. Um, so this is my first time seeing this movie, first time ever hearing about this movie. Never even knew it existed before Dino brought it to the table. So when he said Rafifi, I was just thinking like, all right, like I, I don't know what I'm about to get myself into. So uh, I, I learned quickly by, you know, punching the movie in that it was French, you know, from the title cards and whatnot. I was like, all right, so this is a French movie. It's in black and white. It's from 1955. I'm on board. Uh, turns out this is a pretty cool, like, uh, sort of noir movie. It, it's got this French noir feel, which, you know, I'm not too familiar with. Like, you know, a lot of the French movies I see aren't necessarily this. Uh, I have seen some French, like, crime movies before, but I don't know if I've ever seen one as old as, like, 1955, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so this thing I did, like, quite a bit actually and i liked it more as the movie wore on um you know maybe like as the plot started like the first 30 minutes and we get into like the meat and potatoes of the movie i was kind of sitting back like i don't know if i'm gonna like this or not yeah um but then like there was a few things that i liked i liked a lot of the acting um and then like there was this when it goes quiet there's a quiet scene that, like a lot of the middle is quiet and I really, like, at first was a little annoyed with all the actors how they kept looking at each other the whole movie. I'm like, stop with the looking at each other, because they would never do that now. 
But yeah. I can see why they did it back then. And it's like they need to communicate with their eyes and be able to. And so they give each other a lot of looks like they're very like connected in that way, which is sort of awesome. So at that point, it started to feel like a little bit like a play to me. And I'm like, and these guys are probably used to doing theater anyways, because it seems very like the theater in those moments. Like they're talking with their eyes for sure. And um, that's when I was like, OK, this is interesting. This is like a different art approach to like a heist. You know, it's basically just got to be quiet the whole time. No talking. Figure it out, you know, with your eyes. And so that I really kind of dug. That's when I kind of like got into the movie. Then when the heist was over, it's like, oh, wait, where do we go from here? Like, do they get caught? Yeah. Do they not get caught? So that and, and I had no clue which way it was going to go because of the way the movie was kind of, you know, arced. You know, I did kind of feel, though, I will say this. I did kind of feel like everybody had to get it before the movie was over. Like, well, they all got to die by like movie rules, like the back because they're all bad guys. They can't win in the end. And none of them did. Only the little boy won, you know. Well, I got a thought about that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he didn't win in the long run. They took the money, and he doesn't have a dad. But those are my first impressions of the movie. Um, I did like it. It's a cool, sort of weird French neo noir heist flick, and uh, it's dark. And I actually do want to see more movies like this. Yeah, but go ahead. Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Also, for me, first time uh, watching this film. Um, it's. Uh, I'm glad the things you guys have already said pointed out. This is like two movies. There's like two movies because there's like the heist movie, and then there's like it turns into ransom, right? Mm -hmm. Like almost like oh my god, this is a kidnapping detective, who done it kind of thing now from the point of view of of the uh, robbers, and it, it made me think of like M is for murder and like Let's Samurai, kind of a mix of like. Because at first it's like, okay, they're ruthless, all that, they're planning a thing, but then they fall into this other kind of story or narrative where now they kind of have to figure out who the other, other bad guy is, right? Like when the, after the kidnapping basically, basically happens. And so, yeah, but similar at the very beginning of the film, you know what's hard at the beginning? It's like, it's like, okay, who's going to be the protagonist? Because then the old dude, beats his ex-girl right off the, from the back. And I'm like, whoa, 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 are we, are we supposed to now feel for you? Are we supposed to root for you? Like you, I mean, whatever happened also, we didn't get any backstory. Not that it's cool beating women, but I didn't see, I, I was trying to try and like get the dots going of like, did she, was she the one that got him caught or something like that? I, I was trying to make it work. <laughs> is no reason for beating women. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> but for his character and storytelling, I was trying to figure that out. Don't beat women. Don't beat people. Period. Moving on. I'm glad <laughs> Jason brought that up. I did really enjoy the movie. Man, this is one of the Frenchiest of French movies. That fin at the end, oh my god! It, I almost started laughing also because it reminded me of The Simpsons. I forget what episode it was, but I think they like watch a French or or maybe it was the when he's like snowing and all that. And at the end, it's like Finn. Whenever, yeah, yeah, when was Barney like, was making a movie or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I was. It's just like it's wild that they. I mean. Is that because the French, because even the French were having trouble figuring out that the movie would be over in such a weird cut that the French are like, we got to put scene at the end or else people are going to think we there is more to the movie and there, there isn't. This is it. No more. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, you brought up the uh Jason, you brought up about uh, the sound and lack there of sound. Because mm -hmm. for a second, so let's talk about that sound and lack thereof sound and the music, the 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 composition of music in the movie only happens in certain parts. But then, you know, when they're talking and all that, there is like no underscore and stuff like that. 
but it goes into full silent movie through almost like half of the movie, like a long at time, which makes it feel even more realistic, right? Because in your Ocean's Eleven and your all these other movies, people are going to be talking and like, all right. And even though, like you said, Jason, everyone's just staring and looking at it, it's like no one's saying nothing. Whereas now you'd have like Don Cheeto and like one of the, you know, kind of like talking, blue, 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 you know, not necessarily yep. having to look, but they're every little group of is having their own conversation type of thing, right? But yeah. in this one, it's like no sound, only music, crescendo, and because they're dead silent, uh, you just feel the tension rising so much more. So, uh, so there was yeah. a nice moment of that sequence when they got the first part of the job done, and the one guy is like exhausted, his arms are tired, like he can't hold his arms up anymore, and he crashes in the chair, and everybody else is like doing their function and whatnot. And the one dude that was down there holding the thing for him, he comes back and gives him like a bottle of water immediately. And he's like, yeah. you know, you okay? Be but I really, it seemed goofy at first, but then it started to make a little bit of sense to me. I'm like, oh, like we've been away from these guys for about two hours. And for two hours, they were holding all these pieces up. You know, their arms are probably like about to like give out, right? Yeah. And yeah, and so they're all doing like a function. I'm like, and this dude, right, he's just... Two hours nonstop of this shit, like, and you have to do it in a certain way, or you know what I mean, like, yeah, slow it's... hammering, slow hammering. So, like, taking like ten times more than if you were just hammering away, you know. Yeah, it's been a night for these guys so far. It's in the middle of the night they're doing this. So there's that, and but the moment that they shared there, I really liked that moment because at first I'm like, oh, this is kind of silly, like just the French they're overperforming, and then I'm like, no, no, no. They're, they're telling a story within the story right here of what yeah. just happened for the two hours that we didn't get to see. The heist was my favorite part because there was no translating. Because <laughs> there was the no ice words. Oh, the Because the it's, no... it's just, it's crazy how stealing is universal. <laughs> Not just like making a crime sound beautiful, but it's, yeah. Oh, and also for so the record. It's funny that you say that, that stealing is universal and it makes it interesting. <laughs> uh, one of the quotes um, by someone on Criterion said, the devil's in the details. To make the performance of a tedious, ex uh, exciting, time-consuming task riveting to watch, it is only necessary for the activity to be illegal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying thing. Sense. People will watch it and they'll be riveted by it, even if there's no talking. People yeah. will be riveted as long as it's how, illegal. How long yeah, do you think you go... realize that there was no dialogue? Because it was a. I know. Because like they were whistling at each other, and I'm like, yep. wait, fifteen minutes well, went by. Why I would they... say there's that that whole scene takes like at least twelve minutes. I, I mean, almost thinking twenty, man. Like, yeah, because it took me a minute to realize. Maybe you're right. And then I, I. I, I got busy, so I could have, but I was going to go back and kind of clock it and time it, like when they started no talking, you know, and and like when when they finally like all kind of like, because uh, then even the police, right? Like other than, you know, you hear the cars, the flower person, the this or that, even the police, when they see the license plate, because they, they left like an hour late. I think they had said they needed to be out by 5 a.m. They didn't get done till like 6 a.m., if I'm not mistaken. And so the yep. police were looking at the car and started looking through their like license plates and stuff like that. And they weren't even talking because they were also like, hey, I don't think this car is supposed to be here. So they were just, and they were hiding out. They were gonna, they, were, they clearly it wasn't on their notepad and they were even sneaking, trying to see who was like, it added all these levels to, you know, and what gave them away was the fact that they had their little bicycles that the, the guy saw, right? So it was just like, it's funny what gave away certain things to certain people. Um, yeah, for yeah sure. there was no talking there, no talking when they were waiting for the getaway car to come, no talking when he attacked the police officer. And I want to say they even drove off with no words and got to the new place. Yeah. Yeah, it was a minute because they, they, I feel like even when they were like doing stuff with the alarm before they broke into the apartment, 
like they weren't really talking much either. And mm -hmm. then when they actually like tied the residents up and started getting to getting so yeah i, I want to say maybe 20 minutes like five yeah. pre five in the apartment five to ten ish downstairs five ish with the police and getting away so and but yeah times, there there was a crescendo of the music and like boom and then even that got taken out right and that added yeah. more tension and then music would start up again when it was completely silent um yeah uh i'm trying to see where i I was writing about the music and and stuff like that um boop, 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 boop. but yeah the just the added pressure of like everyone staring at the guy drilling i'd be like that that would be the thing that if people were talking in more modern movies it's like get the fuck off me right or like you know like he's just completely drenched and it's like i need you know you need to move away you know yeah uh, but that yeah okay so from sound let's go into unless you guys got more sound stuff out of the way um the camera work are there any shots or movements of the of the camera that you guys noticed that was different not just for it being 1955, but that also kind of like, whoa, I can't believe they were doing this back then, or they don't really do this anymore. Um, it was in black and white, there, I'm there, <laughs> there is some camera movements that I thought about that I actually liked. Um, probably nothing like that stands out that much. Just, I guess it's my eye. Um, as a filmmaker, I think maybe something that I wanted to steal was the scene when they were walk just when they were walking down the street and how the camera followed behind them and we couldn't like see their face. Um, when he's first like showing them about uh, all the stores, like oh yeah. this store does this, the shop owner gets in at six a.m. Like that shot with them just walking behind them and you could see all the shops and it's and it's also great too because like you would never really see that today because. He's really just giving him the lowdown of like three or four stores in a row on the block. Yeah. And they're just able to walk through it. I don't think it would ever be shot like that today, but I really liked it. And I liked how the people in the background were doing their thing. And like, they're like, oh, this girl has the biggest boobs in the city or whatever. And then they, what I really liked was they showed her come out to do a little business with the flowers and whatnot. And it's like, oh, okay. And, and then like when we see her later, we're like, oh, yeah, that must be the girl who gets in at 6 a.m. It's actually really refined storytelling yeah. because without them showing, bringing attention to the, the girl with the big boobs or whatever, you're kind of forced to look at her. But that means nothing later on in the movie if we don't know that she gets in at 6 a.m. Yeah. And then that and... raises the tension like, oh, they're supposed to be out of here because she's getting her morning delivery. They're supposed to be gone already and they're late. That's, oh, so uh, is that why you were saying? Oh. Oh, I was gonna say, is that how you knew the time? Do you know? Because you were saying they yep. were running late. I'm like, I don't remember yep. a clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was saying what time everybody got to work or whatever, and he was like, she gets in the earliest. That's six a.m. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and they, they, yeah, they were taking notes, and that's one of those things. I'm glad you brought something as simple as that, uh, Jason. In that, uh, also, what great moment of character work was like. Do you want me to? Because I was like, do it, but without looking at it, right? You know, without looking at them. And then it gets to the end of the street. Is like, do you want me to do the other side of the street? Is like, nope, you got it. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. trust is there. They they know each other. But thinking of that, of like new heist movies, and I feel like Rick and Morty has made fun of it and all that. Of it's. Uh, they travel from location to location while in the same like sentence right and that's something like oceans 11 probably does where they go and they're like well this is going to take place in blah 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 and they're right outside the fountains in las vegas and then the blah you know they they're it's like they're having the same conversation through five or ten different locations right mm -hmm. of it just jumping 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 where yep. something as simple as like, no, we're just walking down the street. We're having this conversation and only this conversation. And then we'll be going over to the, the next one. Very linear, very linear. Nothing yeah, really super linear. And it's like, they made what today people would 
they would take all day, like a week to shoot that one little bit of them yeah. going to all the shops and showing someone doing a little business or whatever. They shot it like a play, just walking down the yeah. street, show everybody's business. We know we know the whole format of the heist now. We got the whole yeah. story just in that little bit of dialogue. Um, did you notice any other uh, kind of uh, shots, uh, Marina? You know I didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh wait, did the mute come off? I was like, you know I didn't. No, I don't know. Like it, like you guys know when it's foreign and old, it's taking everything in me to focus. So I would have to watch it again to really start diving into cinematic relevance like i needed to just get this plot so we could talk about this tonight because i my ADHD, my adhd i did not have time like i was like what is going on too much I, too much way. <laughs> so no it was well done you know it's crazy to me that like things like this were hundreds of years like a hundred years no are we not there yet uh, 70, no not quite 70, yeah, 80 55. years and it's like, what the, my, my iPhone camera doesn't look that good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's so crazy to me how like, um, someone really figured out how to use a glass lens back in the day and we can yeah. see their faces clearly. Like it's not, I don't know. I don't know. That's a whole different sidebar. So not necessarily how things were shot, but it is kind of cool that like, it's just, you see everything, the people. The, yeah. They definitely the used the soft lens when they were shooting the girl in the nightclub singing. What a great scene, also. So many different characters. I mean, talk about like good fellas, like any club scenes, and you know, you got every table, every kind of like little story going on. And then also, that's the thing that, um, well, story wise, all these other side characters, I'm like, they got to come into play later, right? Like what they set up at the very beginning with the his ex's new man or whatever and this and that, I was like, I thought that was going to be the movie, right? Mm -hmm. And then it goes off this whole other tangent and then it's like, oh, wait, now it's part of the movie, right? Yep, same. Um, but, I thought that was the same girl at one point. That's another, see, I got to focus because I. It, the, yeah, his, it was, I thought so too. I thought so too. But no, it was a, a different one. Um, what I did notice camera wise was that certain characters throughout the movie at times had same kind of camera angles or points of view shots. Uh, like in the theater, the Italian uh, crack safe or going in the theater in the uh, backstage of the theater when he goes and stuff like that it follows clearly they have that one shot set up right because there's like the the uh, stand-up bass background and stuff like that and it has like a weird point of view uh following camera right that is not on track so it's cool seeing that um i noticed that what movie did we watch last week um uh, uh, it was a good one. The, uh, not the thing. It was. Um... Yes, it was the thing. It was the thing because I thought of this that because I had mentioned last week of how they the thing was using the camera and then using the flashlight to discover things. And then in this movie in 1955, they did that. But not only did they were they following like one flashlight and it's black and white. Then they had the second flashlight and there was almost this dance of the flashlight going in the dark, trying to find what they were doing. And I was like, man, I, you know, like they were playing and they, even though it's black and white, they're like, yeah, we're going to play flashlight, follow the flashlight for a while in the dark. So I saw that. I love then, that. I love like the proper usage of flashlights in movies. Yeah. Like legit. This looks we cool. need it. Yeah. What's the improper use of flashlight? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who did oh, it no. wrong? <laughs> well, no, no, no. I get the when they when they I, put the flare right into the camera. Sometimes they did it wrong. I oh, don't know. Maybe, oh, maybe not. Uh, yeah, the lens flare. Sorry. Everything is the lens flare, and it's these have been like point of view of where the flashlight is actually uh, is actually looking at versus people with flashlights. Because then when you normally do have the opposite in nowadays, 
I feel everything's so well lit. Back, you know, like in the thing and definitely in this movie, I was like, nah, this is this is a dark room and we're we're only gonna see what the flashlight is really showing us. Whereas now, and maybe even with digital, it's like every that's what happens now with so many movies, they feel so flat, right? Yep. The lighting it's like everything has to be lit perfectly so then in post we can do whatever needs to be done and it's going to be easier whereas then it's like yeah shit ain't going to be touched in post so let's just fuck around with the yeah. flashlight for 10 minutes <laughs> i would have, i would have loved to have been on a creative team back then that's a good point man it wasn't like there's no tech to fix things like you had to be so creative back then like Minus like women's rights and people of color's rights of the time, <laughs> it would have Never been really it. cool <laughs> to be a part of it <laughs> if I could wear a white man in disguise back in the day. But like, it's just like just to be one of the first people to think about that. Like, oh, let's get a flashlight, yeah. zoom in, let's let's do this, let's do that, let's angle it this way. Like, it that probably was so cool to be a part of that like original cinema creativity. Oh yeah, absolutely. No AI. I want to. <laughs> I want to. Kind of want to get in. Let's go. Okay, because we're talking about shot. I mean, I have so many questions for you guys, but I don't want. This has too much to do with towards the end of the movie, so we'll put a pin on this on 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 shots and use of cameras. And uh, do we want to talk costumes, outfits, you know, wardrobe? Yeah, uh, we can talk about all. it a little bit because I what I noticed was, I mean, I, I knew that everybody was going to be wearing a suit and tie and a fedora. I was like, some of the French fedoras, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like the one dude with the the different fedora on. I was like, yeah, that's very French. Their suits had a little bit of weight to them, right? Like the suits had some weight to them. Like so, it's like, oh, they're also in a like a cold climate, but their suits were also a little bit baggier too because it's like the 1950s France. But also very cool this is this everything looks cool in this movie it looks like the french the french neo cool sort of nice cars nice shots of buildings uh you know nice shots of clothes like the women all their clothes have like those kind of strong silhouettes to them um uh uh like yeah the shirts and ties it's just kind of classic 1950s affair but not lame how it was in america not a lot cool about the American fifties as far as like suit culture per se, but in France they were like they were rocking it kind of like jazzy. Not only that, they go on this big old jewelry heist dressed to the teeth, like, <laughs> and then all their whole thing is like, you know what? We're gonna put some ballet shoes on, like that. That was their big like. We're still gonna drill and do everything and hammer. I mean, clearly by the end, you did see dude had taken out his jacket and everything, right? Like when he kind of finally collapses, he's in his t-shirt. But the fact that they started just like immaculate clothing and they, you know, I was just like, whew, what a time. Yeah. Fashion reminded me a lot of like the Italian films we've watched. It's just, I feel like just Europe as a whole was on a different playing field back in the day like just different thought process like um i really love the entertainers dress like her dressing like she was doing her little dance on the piano and her leg black like she was just have we seen any of these actors before and anything else we reviewed i don't know why if it's just like similar makeup or like a sense of their fashion but the guy who played tony and then the lady who was like the jazz performer i feel like i have seen her somewhere i didn't have time to look yeah. it up but yeah. Yeah, they remind me a lot of like the of the Italian cinema that we've dabbled in, but yeah, but yeah, just overall, yeah, it's just even then, like I said, 1955 to look so fresh, it's just crazy, you know. Uh, yeah, man, you go back to a lot of 1955 movies; they're not really looking that fresh. Like, I mean, even like, I mean, you start thinking about Bogart, and it's it, Americans don't get cool in the 1950s cinema until like. To movies like The Wild One and Rebel Without a Cause and like like Brando shows up and just it doing something completely different. Levi's and a white shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, like just well, like change the game. Oh, you're saying that cool. I was also thinking of any kind of cool. 
American also their shots being very flat and very much like in inset, you know, backdrops. And I was gonna say the only one maybe being cool in the fifties, Hitch Hitchcock was doing stuff in the fifties already, right? We like that was very innovative with camera and sound and stuff like that because we have seen some of his movies that we've reviewed that does some really good job and is also black and white and from that time period. Um, but yeah, yeah, it feels like the majority. Yeah, because there was big studio just do do do, and I mean that's right the stereotype of the french film and italian in that time that it's just artsy films right and i think um, so too like when you talk about stereotypes i think like you know i hate to sound american you know but like i feel like we were more like cowboy culture for a very long time like we oh, yeah, took yeah. pride we took pride in our country we took pride in like just being a man that uses their hands, like that kind of thing for a bit. While other countries had to like kind of show out more when it came to it, they had to be more fashion icons and things. So it just, they just provided different resources. Like, so um, I definitely think that like, yeah, America took a little bit longer to, to emphasize glamor. It was more about being a cowboy and just being yep. like, you know, using your hands to make this great country. <laughs> like <laughs> our yeah. film and so. Yeah. Now, what this maybe also has, uh, this is somewhat, ba this is based off a novel also. So, I mean, that's probably why it has such rich background uh, storytelling and characters, which is the next thing I want to bring up is the characters, right? They're, once the movie got going, like they had some really defined characters, I felt like. Everybody. That, Everybody's really yeah, so I don't know if you guys have favorite or non-favorite uh, or just little moments that popped out. That so you know. right away, right away, um, the first one that popped out to me, because I was kind of afraid like the women characters weren't going to be very defined. And yeah. uh, right away, when the, the woman says, when he comes home, you know, his, his ex who, you know, he's been in prison or whatever, he comes home, find out that she's messing with another gangster or whatever. Um, you know, she says like, hey, well, you know, you, like you messing with him. Yeah, I'm messing with him. But I mean, honestly, if it wasn't him, it was going to be somebody else anyways. I mean, that right there tells you exactly what this world is. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she's going to she's going to mess with one of these gangsters because that's how she get down. And Not so don't that, be bad at him. Yeah. Your enemy. Well, don't working. be bad at your enemy. Huh? She was working. Not only was she with him, she was working the nightclub. Because oh, when yeah. he shows up, she's sitting at a table with some rando, right? And yeah, yeah. and they and and she, and she was working at because the dude brought new champagne. Is like there's still some in here, and she's like, "Hey, don't be stingy or something like that." Yeah, like, don't be yeah, cheap gonna, or something. You're gonna pay for another bottle of champagne anyway. Go on, but yeah. So. No, no, you're not wrong. Like, yeah, she's just she's hustling, and she's like, "I'm of this world. I'm about to hustle." And I was like, okay, so we're dealing with, like some real gangster elements because like now we're meeting different characters in their world who like serve a uh, function in the world. And then it's like they kept kind of going around like, oh, here's his enemy and, you know, his henchmen. And like it's all there for a very early gangster movie, essentially. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a heist movie for real, but everybody in it is a gangster. They're doing all types of bad things. Yeah. Stealing, robbing, kidnapping, you know, like, nothing, ki killing, nothing's off the table. <laughs> so she's your favorite. Um, again, you guys got to bear with me. Um, I just got to get the plot across the table when it's in the 50s and it's foreign. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't feel like I had like one solid like, oh, that's my guy type of person. Especially because like, I feel like it could have been Tony, but like we talked about before, like he beat the crap out of this girl. And then like, yeah. we never really touched base on that. And then like, she helped him in the end. That was weird. That was like toxic. You know, these are things that we fought for as women over the past 50, 60 years to change. I but, think at the end though, it came down to the kid, right? I think that's why she helped at the end. Was yeah, the yeah, kid. For, for sure. I, and you know, but like, I don't know, like favorite moments, obviously that little boy was so cute. Cause I was like, wait, is he really in 
<laughs> like he doesn't even realize he got kidnapped. He's just out here playing with his yeah, toy He's gun. just like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, playing, Uncle playing with a dope addict. <laughs> I loved him. I had I was a sucker for the guy that ruined everything because he was like so in love and stole that Very ring Italian. and totally totally cover like un, like root that's the whole plan. Like you really just couldn't get her a different ring. Like you were about to be rich off this stuff. You just got her another. No, but it, it's it's his ring. Remember? I I'm pretty sure he took the ring. Right. Because he had he had, and I even I even wrote that that because they had it they were going to go back up but for him to be able to look around and know what the security system and what the safe was mm -hmm. he went in with a jewel to for them to uh keep safeguard and yes. and right he's climbing up and he's like you know what let me just steal my ring back you know which yeah so well, i was still thought, dumb he, tied it back to him but like i'm saying like you could have still went and got another one like, yeah. you know, either way, you're the reason why it all got traced freaking bad. But right. so, yeah, even though he's annoying, it still was such an iconic person to the story. Like, it wouldn't have escalated yeah. without his dumb thing. Like, they got away with it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That I mean, that was such a good pairing of Mario, right? The guy who was buddy, the, the, who called the Italian crack safe guy. Safe crack, safe crack, crack safer, safe crack, safe crack, <laughs> safe cracker. Yeah, crack. Uh, crack everywhere. But like the two of them, right? Like, and he was so cheerful, right? And like, what a good guy. At the end, even he's telling his girl, like, don't say, it. like, he knows the game. Like, you say it, they're going to kill you anyway. So just don't say, it. don't give up your boy. Like, they're going to kill you anyway. And like that scene, that's probably. The, one of the best scenes I've seen in in these kind of movies, like the amount of feeling that you know, like what you just think a high school movie, and because then I'll we'll, we can talk about the whole stuff with the kids and all that. But like, you know, because Italian was a quick turnaround, right? Whatever, right? Which oh, all this foreshadowing, we haven't got into the foreshadowing, but just Mario's reaction and like knowing that he got him still playing dumb, that it was the Italian that gave him away and him being like, I don't know, I don't know. And then his woman kind of being like, I get, let me try and do the right thing to save us. And him like, kind of like, no, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna do this. And then the druggie basically going too early and killing him and so, you know, she also decides to like, you know what, let me warn them type of situation. That was such, so impressive of just like showing their characters and stuff like that, but how fun and loving they were at the beginning. Now, uh, you guys, anything else character wise? Cause I'm going to tie this in to our next part. Of oh, she's I like them too. Like they were very loyal. It's like the first time I wasn't frustrated because it's like people always give up in the end. They have that little bit of hope that if they yeah. tell people where the stash is, or they tell people where the person is, they're not going to die. And it's like, bro, they're always going to kill you. So it was just kind of cool. Yeah. She's like, Tony, why would I come in? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Go down like a gangster. But yeah. <laughs> oh, and then the I thought for sure procedure. they were going to rat him out. Yeah. I thought for sure. I was like, yeah, of course they're going to snitch. I was like, wow, that's like, dang, you really. <laughs> Boys to the end, you know, and that shows of the original crew, right? Because even at the very beginning, right, he could have snitched on the younger guy and didn't, right? And it's like, that's how tight they all were of just like, yeah, we're not snitching. Oh, and I haven't seen this necessarily in other movies because we did get a show of cops at the funeral procession and usually all these mob movies you see all the mob guys coming up and bringing the flowers and kissing on the cheeks and showing respect and all that nothing but i mean cars and the 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 reeds the reeds of the flowers and everything to the like just amazing 
and the cops are there and it's like what are you doing like no one shows up and he's like yeah just gotta just gotta show up you never know there might be the one time that someone does show up we can maybe nab them or write it down type of thing but that i don't think i've seen of just this idea like everybody knows who all the bad guys are this guy gets killed and then no one shows up to his procession but then it does show the the two of them in like a taxi doing the like you can like the act again like you think it's the 50s there's maybe all that overacting of just staring at each other and it's very theater and and stuff but then it has these small small moments of them just in the taxi like and you can feel their pain of just like kind of their the the funny guy of the of the team you know yeah that not only not only did he die and his girl but they warned them they didn't give them up they warned them and that i thought was great yeah that was awesome if you yeah, have, yeah like, he was the uh, the comic release. Yeah, I was gonna say if you don't have my back like that, I don't want it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. The so we're going game. down to a flame of glory, babe. <laughs> usually, you you sometimes in modern movies when someone does give them up and fucks up, it's usually like, all right, we'll give you another chance or something like that, and then they mm -hmm. normally fuck it up again, or the yep. guy that. Uh, sells them out, sells them out. Usually makes it right and doesn't die. Boy was like, you know the rules, and just murked him. You know, like good old just murked. And I was like, oh damn, <laughs> you know, like that always doesn't necessarily happen. They all usually you get that sour grapes feeling of like that guy survived. Like if we would have just killed him from the get go, we could have maybe made it through. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to die. Um, Me neither. Yeah. But let's, so we talk about something that's like, the one thing that they were definitely in their year, those deaths were hilarious. Like the gunshots, like, and oh, how people yeah. went out. They're like, pa, pa, pa. And I was just like, oh, 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 okay. I was like, did they miss? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it just wasn't realistic. That was the one uh, thing. Well, yeah, was, I mean, it was pre-snapping. Although speaking of the shooting, just really quick with the the dancing, and then they had the silhouette dancing, and then that final thing where the the refifi, which is something sexual, I think, right? Is a refifi just kind of like sex? Basically, that's what men want is refifi, and that's what gets them in trouble is refifi. And, well, uh, I looked up what refifi really means, and it just means yeah. like fisticuffs. Oh. Huh. Danger, yeah, but oh, that makes sense. But is that is that like a double entendre then, right? Because it it is the gun, like in the silhouette and all that. It talks about they just want refifi, but they kept mixing it within the girl, but then also the gun and the fighting. And then in the silhouette, it's like shoots it, puts it up to the cigarette, and in the most French way, smoke comes out. And I was like. Damn, that's cool! Little silhouette dancing uh, show, like, and that's their sexy show, right? Like, it's not even burlesque. It's like I'm just gonna sing. It's not even like full on cabaret. It's like I'm gonna sing and be sexy and. I've seen a show like that before. At the, yeah. at the uh, little place down the street from our house. At Bob Barker's Marionette Theater. That's right. <laughs> What uh, was the show called? Um, okay, so <laughs> moving forward to uh, this is gonna kind of we're kind of tying in towards the end. Um, taking it back to to cool shots and stuff like that. I have, and this kind of can tie into final thoughts maybe or the end of the movie, but the shot of the mom as soon as they take the kid and she's running under those pillars Fantastic. Like those are the type of shots that i'm like damn like they weren't afraid of like again is it limitations is it this or that it's like we got the camera here you are just like you know a hundred yards 
down all of these amazing pillars in France, uh, you know, architecture. Just run, just run towards us. And that's it's like those kind of shots of letting it breathe. Well, Mama over here, what? Um, what well, so just felt to, it. To it was really well done. Like how you would feel. Like shoot, like yeah. not my kiddo. And then as far as what you know, you were bringing up, like the shot itself. Like I, another thing about it would have been cool to have been a filmmaker back then. There were no permits. There, <laughs> you know, you could yeah. just you just record monuments. Nobody, you didn't have to get anything approved. Nobody really knew what was going on. Well, but, yeah. Tying in that because it's the mom and the kid when the dude is trying to drive the kid back and he's bleeding out and the way that they're, you know, because clearly we know they have the back screen of driving, right? But they did such a good job of of how they were interconnecting, splicing the film of of him driving and the little kid having fun, you know, with the fake gun, like a cowboy, dude's like bleeding out. And I'm like, and the music there's, you know, cause he's not talking, little kid's not talking. So that's one of the times when they actually have the music crescendo going up and they're showing him kind of swerving, but then they're doing such a great shot of the point of view of the car and just like the monuments and everything. And I thought, like you said, at one point that no one was going to make it, I was like, this dude's going to run off a cliff or he's going to run off into a thing and the little boy is also going to die. And I'm like, this is going to be the worst. I That's what I was, I mean, they did such a great job with tension building with the music and just the editing. And again, right, in 55, I don't know how you guys felt about that. Well, I thought the opposite. I was not expecting a sad ending. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's, he's he's losing all this blood and he's swerving, but it's going to all be all right. So when he like crashed into the thing and it was over, I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I know I, when I, he said, Grandpa, look at the trees, it was over. <laughs> but I thought they were going to crash into the trees and we were going to oh, lose. No. Uh, that I didn't know. Well. That I didn't know. I just what? I just assumed like I, that there was fear for that, which is great. I think. They're definitely yeah. trying to get that out of us. There's that fear that, like, please get this little boy home. And that's what kind of like that's his last little bit of redemption. Right. I'm going to I'm going to see this little boy home, even though I know it's over for me. I always want the criminals to get away with it. And I'm glad that more modernized heist movies have given me that itch. Cause you said <laughs> earlier, Jason, that like all the bad guys got to lose. No. All right. You know. Like they won in Oceans 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. They won in Bandits. Like, so it does make me really sad when they don't freaking win. Like that place is insured. They'll be all right. Let's Although, go. You're right. <laughs> is is you're right. Rififi a franchise? Cause it looks like there's six other Rififis out there. Yeah, I didn't look into the plot. <laughs> there was one like Rififi in the city or something like that. I um. um okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll bring this up then um, of you thinking that it died. And uh, there was something that I was going to mention earlier, and this is where I'm going to mention it, of uh, what they did. Oh, so it's like Le Samurai also, right? At the yeah. end, it's almost like, remember when they all said what they were going to do with the jewel, once they got the jewel, what each one wanted? Did yes. They all achieved it, basically. Is that Mario, right? Well, Mario and his girl went to hotels, right? It showed like a quick little maybe montage of them being in like five star hotel or something like that, right? Um, and then uh, the Italian guys talked about being with a girl, right? Like going with a girl or whatever, which if not the foreshadowing was at the beginning of when Mario said, the safe cannot resist him and he can resist women or something like that was a, Right. that it brought up and that clearly is what happened with him and you know the dad was like i'm doing this for my kid and then old dude was like i don't know why i'm doing this so at the end basically and you see that he was doing it for the kid because he he ended up breaking down even though he you know was like don't do it don't go there you know you're not gonna make it just give me time 
and and you know when he was he was about to miss the train and and they were like cuz I was like oh is it like can I use your phone and they're like oh it's for inside the train station only and he's about to run across the street to let the guy know right like don't don't worry I got the place but the train's getting there and he's like I can't make that phone call I can't make that last phone call and it's great one thing I liked also is the analog esque of these movies where nowadays it's like just call just tell them just communicate give the time but this is them like forcing like every 20 minutes i'm gonna call you i'm gonna find a phone and finally it's like it's circumstance he just couldn't get to a phone right which ended up being the communication whereas in more modern day films it's always got to have an even bigger suspension of disbelief of being like couldn't communicate this one time no cell reception but so the old dude ended up doing it for the kid right and in that sense the mom at the end got the kid and you know i think part of it was the old dude clearly was sick and he just if he was gonna go out it's that old kind of uh trope of guys want to go out on their shield right and not they they want to they want to have one final adventure one final score basically so yeah uh, that is interesting i i didn't put all that stuff together but yeah there's a lot of little things going on right he is pretty sick because he's like you know coughing the whole movie and like this guy might you know be have cancer or something who knows you know and that was um, another thing that i felt like oceans 11 might have taken right they they had an older man that was kind of like dealing with health concerns too so interesting. There's no original thoughts. <laughs> I mean, listen, this is one of the earliest good heist movies I think I've ever seen. Like 1955. Like I, I can't think of an older heist movie that I've seen. I mean, you know, I've seen stuff from like the the, the 40s with Humphrey Bogart and whatnot, and maybe like, but like for a French movie, this thing is like on point. Turns out the director was already making American films. Uh, he had done a couple studio films for MGM and then for whatever reason, he's like, I don't like this Hollywood system. I'm out of here. Like an artist, he moved to France and made a movie. There you go. Well, I can definitely, I can feel that too. Like it definitely feels, I feel like some of the Italian films we've watched, I feel like they stuck true to like their energy. I definitely can see some American influence on this film. Yeah, um, which probably made it a little bit more relatable for my millennial self. <laughs> Listen, I was surprised with how easy the movie was to understand. I was like, man, uh, I hope yeah. the plot doesn't get convoluted. And all. you know what I mean? Like, I kept thinking that, like, like this thing. I, I hope I can understand it. But then, like, they they set up a, a lot real fast, and then we go into like a really long scene that's just like just quiet. It's just these four guys in a room trying to get a thing done and it's like okay it slows everything down so then when it pops back into like you know the the the, the other dire stuff you're just with it you're just with it it's, it's a really well paced well put together movie script wise the way it's filmed the editing it, it's all there man this is actually a really good movie like right. storytelling well, yeah 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 well i mean yeah a lot of and also just clean and crisp like movies like this sometimes between shots or stuff like that there might you know like it was it just seemed like a very clean edit and clearly you know the film you know sometimes films that we see from this age every now and then there might be some off shots or whatever but this seemed really on point all right uh anything else you guys want to bring up before quick final thoughts because i feel like we've been talking some pretty good pretty good stuff especially even conclusion wise of, of the film or going into nope. the final thoughts. nope i feel like i've said all my thoughts and all you guys thoughts have given me new thoughts well all right well instead of just going final thoughts then if we unless anyone else has anything else uh again we might just end like the French do and say fin. <laughs> we have to tell people who we're gonna recommend this to, Gino. Don't try to spoil oh. 
Okay, okay, all right. So then let's just do that. Marina, who would you recommend this to? Nobody. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Yeah. I would recommend this to people that like foreign films and original cinema. I don't know if I have any other friends besides people in this club that are into that. But, yeah, I mean, I always say you guys keep me cultured because I'm very much a pop 2K girly who loves where she came from and loves the era she was born into. So I, I would just never think to watch these films. Like, I just, like, so it's always kind of cool to see where things came from. So, yeah, people studying film, people that maybe need, like, a little encouragement and just getting back to their roots. I feel like movies like this remind you, like, wow, like, we can really make movies out here. And they really, there's a history in the art. So just, yeah, anybody that we're talking about, like, oh, man, you should... Go watch this if you're thinking about creating something yourself. Um, and then people who are into foreign films. Um, I, I, I think Jason had said it before. He never heard of it before. A lot of this stuff, I don't think, got enough recognition. So yeah. just putting it out there for people uh, as an option of something to watch that's not American. Like, it's just it's another whole other culture's art. And uh, is this a movie you might see yourself watching again at some point? Maybe. Um, I it's it's so hard for me. I never learned French. <laughs> yeah, but sub like subtitles, like it's just it's tough. Um, maybe if I were to watch it with another person. Yeah. No, I I don't, I don't mean don't... by yourself. I just mean like it's not one that it's like I don't need to see this again, right? It's just like is this something you would see yourself seeing again more than anything like is it good enough that in the right scenario either with people or whatever you would yeah definitely with people or even if it came on like a, a tv show sometimes i just have the television on like cable and i don't know if this would come on like tcm or, <laughs> you know i don't know <laughs> what channel <laughs> but if it was TV on like, oh shoot that's a heist movie <laughs> but yeah, yeah definitely i would show this to someone and watch it with them don't know if i would necessarily watch this as a comfort movie um yeah. as a mom as a person trying to pay their bills like it, it's just yeah it's not to over complicate my answer but it just a lot of times my comfort movies are in english <laughs> And Man, so <laughs> if this if this is someone's comfort movie, I got way more questions for them than... everybody's different. Everybody's different. But I, I would know. sit down and show this to people and be like, oh, let's watch this together. I watched this in the cinema club and I thought it like taught me this, this, and that for sure. Nice. Jason? Okay, you, uh, before we go, before I yeah. do my little final thoughty thought, uh I just should let you guys know that the budget on this movie was $200,000 in 1955, or francs, I don't know, either or. Um, and it grossed worldwide $517,000. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, this thing did what it could do, I guess. Uh, so, I like this movie a lot, man. I didn't think I would. I didn't think I would even while I was watching it. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. Yeah. But I, it really wore on me. And I'm like, oh, man, this thing is so well put together. And it's a simple story. Uh, like Marina said, it's you know pretty easy to understand for a French movie from 1955. It's not existential at all. It's just some dude, it's just a bunch of people here hustling, trying to get it, right? And it's like, and then these are all underworld people. And so it's like, okay, well, you know, we've sort of seen this story before. So I would say anybody who likes, you know, a movie about some gangsters who's okay watching a 1955 black and white, you know, French film. But you're going to get a very early on, like you can see like influences that were pulled from this. Like I can't think of an older movie that does a bunch of the same stuff that every heist movie I've ever seen has done. So who knows? But Dino said it did come from a book. So it, it's smart. It's thoughtful. Um, characters are really well defined. I liked it, man. I would uh, recommend this to those types of people. Um, film students, obviously, is a criterion movie. Like you can't go... This is this honestly probably one of the better Criterion movies I've seen, if I'm being honest with you. I didn't really expect to like this that much. This is probably yeah. a top maybe 25 Criterion pick for me. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, would I see it again? Uh, yeah, no, I would, I would totally 
jump into this again. I actually thought about that in the middle of the movie and I had kind of said no. But by the end of it, I'm like, man, like I didn't realize it was all going to fit together this well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would watch this again. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of felt the same thing at the beginning. I think it's the woman beating that I'm just like, is this our lead? I just... That'll do it. That'll do it. I was just like, I don't know. Like this movie better have some other stuff going on because I I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't fuck with that <laughs> and yeah it did because I I was like because also it starts with gambling right and like he needs to get money and so I'm just like what is this movie gonna be about but yeah one like it did really good job of like you know getting these different stories actually going and and stuff like that that. Like Jason was also saying, like of time period that we've seen is one of the older ones that a lot of movies we've seen since. Whether they took it from that this movie or just the fact that yeah, this is that old of a movie that was already playing with these issues. Um, this is what I just thought of that maybe going forward we might like to think of like. A movie like this would be great as, uh, like when you do two movies, you know, like a double a double showing or whatever. And so, like, it's this an Ocean's Eleven or this, you know, like a heist movie with another heist movie, or like this would be a fun kind of scenario where it would be easier to recommend to people, right? Sure. It's like okay, instead of watching Ocean's Eleven, Twelve, Thirteen, how about you watch this? and then Ocean's Eleven, right? Or we could start doing that with other films. I think that's a great way to recommend people. And definitely a way that I would love to maybe go see this movie somewhere with, you know, in a theater or something, if it's like a showing multiple movies and it's like the same kind of genre. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think I think that might do it for us. Jason, uh, any any other things before we leave? Yeah, just one more question. Uh, what do we got for ourselves next week? I don't know why you're asking uh, the ether, but uh, because that's Marina Marina. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm going to jump a few decades and in languages. <laughs> and it's I don't know when this is going to be on the internet but in this current time it is spooky season so i did want to pick a spooky movie so we are going to watch smile okay the smile. First, the first one so, interesting super excited i hadn't seen it yet um let's just tears the season so let's all right on. sounds okay. great awesome so uh, this has been Oye Dimelo Cinema Club for Jason, Marina, and myself, Don Dino. Thank you and goodbye. Bye-bye.